lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today. This is gonna be a fun one. It is time for a swatch party. I'm finally getting around to swatching all of my Terra Moon shades. Well, actually, I guess I should say a few of these, I'm really quick to the game on swatching for you and the rest of them, I'm really late to the game. So here we are, we've got about a dozen and a half of these babies to go. So the story is that I bought a lot on Black Friday and just kept waiting for the special moment to give these their time to shine and it just got away from me. And then when Terra Moons was doing their new launch, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna be getting a few of these shades, so I might as well just wait until the new new come in, and that's exactly what I did. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly, and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist, and here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun, so if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos, like future swatch parties. I have one coming soon. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna do that as a live or as a pre pre-filmed, but it's coming down the way. So here we are. We again do have a few of the new shades, which I've been talking to a few of my creator friends and we were all so excited because Terra Moons had said that this pre-order was going to be estimated to be shipped out around May 9th and we're all like getting our packages. That's the way we like it. Send out our pretties early. <laughs> And that's exactly what they did. So we're gonna be going through these and I'm gonna be going through my Black Friday list, like I said. And a few of these shades, I was inspired to dig out some comparisons, some from Terra Moon, some from other companies. So that's gonna be what we're getting into. Now, this is just going to be a very cash swatch party. I'm here in my tie-dye sweatshirt. So mostly the focus is on the swatches of these. I am gonna do a look, which is why I'm completely naked eyed right now. I'm naked faced in the swatches, so. Enjoy that moment if you can actually see my face in those. I tried to get like really good up close back of the hand swatches for you to really see these. I'm trying to up my game here, people, I'm trying. This is also speaking of upping my game. <laughs> This is the first time I'm using my mic boom. I realized in a recent video, I think it was my Nomad Cosmetics video, uh, my air register is like over right by where the camera is. And so sometimes the microphone was picking that up. If you think that I'm like, by a white noise machine, that's not it. It's just air blowing out of the register. So I got a boom and I'm hoping that it works right now. I'm hoping I'm, I'm not like blasting you out right now. I'm hoping you can hear me. I guess I'll be finding out. So I'm trying to bring you the best videos I can. If you appreciate the effort, don't forget to give this video a like, but we're gonna get into the swatches and then I am gonna do a look for you. So without any further ado, please enjoy. All right, here we have Galactic Blossom. This is by far one of the ones that I know that I'll probably get a ton of use out of and I'm very excited to use just because I feel like this is a shade you could do with a lot of looks. It's like a beautiful shifty shade, but in, I don't know, like in an unintimidating way. So if you aren't, you know, really a huge multi-chrome wearer, you don't want like all the colors of the rainbow, I think this one could still be very pretty. It has a very pink to green to peachy shift. So here is one that I was not expecting. I mean, these are quite, they're quite close. They're not exactly the same, but this is Undeniably Pink from Touch of Glam. And then this is that Galactic Blossom, I believe it was called. Yeah, Galactic Blossom from Terra Moons. Now in the pan, they look so different. They are very, very close. I will say the texture is totally different. Like the Touch of Glam one is way more emollient. So if you have oily lids, but you kind of want this shade, I would go with the Terra Moons one. But boy, I mean, other than the emolliency level, like these are so close. I think, I think I duped my own collection. Dang it. All right, this next one is Falling Star. And, you know, I think a lot of people might be underwhelmed by this one because it doesn't have that super sparkly feel. Actually, this almost reminds me of the formula that's in the Nomad Cosmetics duochromes, but there was just something to the shade of this. Like, I feel like I like the, the base of this with that beautiful violet and then you've got that little bit of like a magenta flip almost to it too. So I don't know, this was just like, this is really unique. I think this might be a nice one when you want a little bit of shift, but maybe not quite as much sparkle. All right, here we have two shades that I put together just so you could see the difference. On the top, we have Quasar and on the bottom, we have Big Dipper. So these are obviously two greens, but it's so funny because if, you, okay, there we go. So if I tip it like this, you can see the bases are very different. Like Quasar is much more of that, hmm, like kind of asparagus-y minty green, whereas uh, Big Dipper is more aqua, but the shifts 
give them a little bit of the same vibe. So, all right, a couple comparison swatches here. You'll see as I start doing my look, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried that I had some dupes here already. I duped myself, my own collection. So this top one is Twisted Dirty Martini from Touch of Glam. And then the bottom one is that Quasar shade. So when I was doing the look, I felt like they looked sort of similar, but I actually, I don't think, I mean, look at that shift right there. They, they really aren't that close. This one, the Terra Moon shade is more of a vivid green and it doesn't have as much of the like gold reflect that the Twisted Dirty Martini does from uh, Touch of Glam. I mean, they both have that pink reflect, but I feel like it's in the shift. Like once I pop it this way, you can see this one has way more gold and this one's a little bit more of a vibrant green. So whew, I feel like they're, they're, they're different enough that it's worth having both of them in my collection because I love green so much. Wow, look at that. So this is Witch's Broom Nebula, holy buckets. <laughs> Like, can we just for a moment? I think that this one is so pretty. Up close, you really see a lot of like multi-chrome little sparkles, but even the base looks to like shift from like that blue to that green. Oh, so good. This is definitely like the deepest of the shades that I got, but this is gonna make for a beautiful eye look. All right, here are the other three that I picked up in my most recent order. So here we have Celestial Petal, and we have axis and then we have phases down on the bottom. Now I have to say, I surprisingly am the least excited about the bottom one. I feel like this is somewhat close to radiation. It's not quite as like electric, but I don't know. I just feel like I've seen greens like this before, but I'll be happy to have another one in my Terra Moons collection. But this one, this shade Axis is just such a good combination of like that peachy pink with that pretty shift. And I think that you could kind of sheer it out a little bit. You could also wear it like full tilt. This one on the top, this Celestial Petal is very pretty too. I mean, these are all very pretty, but you can tell they just don't have quite as much shift to them. I'm gonna go ahead and get radiation out really quick just to pop it down here so we can see the comparison. Okay, so hopefully there you can see that comparison. Radiation, trying to get it, there we go. You can see that radiation is quite a bit brighter and it doesn't have that like goldy shift, but I mean, eh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I actually, I think radiation is more unique just because of like the vibrancy of it. All right, moving into my Black Friday order, finally. <laughs> so here we have Meteorite, we have Phoenix, and here is Lightyear. I mean, y'all, this is such a smooth formula. I feel like sometimes to get this, this level of sparkle, it, it has to be a flakier texture. And a lot of times with these like light bases, I just find that it tends to be flakier. These are so, so creamy. And you can see that these all have very unique Bases and shifts from each other, so I'm glad that I got all. all right. Here we have Cosmic Dancer, Veil Nebula, and the Cosmos. I mean, look at how much shift there is in these shades. So cool. I'm really excited to play with Cosmic Dancer just because it's a bit transparent. Like it's just got a little bit of like sheerness to it. So I think it'll be fun to like use as a topper shade. And then this Veil Nebula. I mean, that's just got some grungy goodness right there. Like, oh, that's gonna be great. And then of course the Cosmos is I think a very, very popular one. The Cosmos gives me the vibes of Lucid Lavender a little bit. I know that they're not the same. I'm gonna actually swatch them um, Lucid Lavender from Touch of Glam if I didn't say that, just so you guys can see, but it does give a little bit of that vibe. I thought maybe I had a Cleona shade that's close to this top one, but I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. But, oh, look at that. I mean, like just that, that violet shift is pretty strong in this one. And this one is just like, murky swamp goddess alien gorgeousness. All right, I'll be right back. This is the Cosmos and the top one is Touch of Glam Lucid Lavender. They're, they're cousins, but they're not the same. You can see here, Lucid Lavender definitely has more of that lavender flip. This one's a bit more pinky. And I feel like, you know, Lucid Lavender has that bluey purple undertone while the Cosmos is more of like a, almost like a greeny blue, I would say. So definitely different, yay. All right, here we have a fun group. We have Chasing Comets, Multiverse, and Celestial. So I have a gap here because I want to swatch uh, Lucid Lavender again because I think they might be kind of close, kind of like another, another cousin pair. But this is very pretty. You can see 
this nice shift. I feel like I see like the violet, a blue, and then almost like a, like a greeny gold. You see that right there? So hard to describe these sometimes. <laughs> then we have Multiverse, and this was by far the flakiest of what I'm gonna be swatching for you today. It definitely is like a semi-flaky shade. It's also, it feels a little bit gritty when you swatch it. It's, it feels like a hollow shade. Does that make sense? Like, like it has like micro glitter in it, but it doesn't. It's, it just has a little more texture. And then this Celestial shade, uh, there's just something about this one. It's not super shifty. It is a bit of a duochrome. You can probably see like right here, we have that kind of like a little bit of like pinky purple shift. So I don't necessarily think that the shift on this one is unique, but look at that when it's like straight on that color is, it's what I always refer to as power blue. It's like power blue mixed with like the deepest version of periwinkle in my opinion. So these are very pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and grab Lucid Lavender one more time so we can swatch it next to Chasing Comets. Okay, here you can see they're not the same. Uh, they have a little bit of the same reflect, like they both have that purpley shift right there, but the bases are totally different. You can see that the base of Chasing Comets is more purple, whereas Lucid Lavender is almost like that that blue gray violet, if that makes any sense. So not the same, which makes this girl happy. All right, apologies for the staining. I just tried to wash my hands like twice and it just would not come off, but we have two more here. Uh, you can see I've spaced them out because I wanna put some comparisons up. So we have Palladium right here, and then we have Space Drifter. So Palladium is obviously that very molten rose gold. When Terra Moons launched those, I believe it was four, it was either three or four metallic shades. I was like, okay, these are so pretty, but I really I really just need the rose gold one. That's gonna be the one that I use the most. Uh, of course, everybody kind of wants to know how the Moonscapes collection from Davina differs. So I'm gonna swatch the ones that are similar. And then this Space Drifter shade, is one of those like red to sort of black, but it's not, it's not black black. It's almost like a brown black. So I'm going to take uh, Midnight Sun from Davina and swatch it next to this one. All right, so here we have some comparisons. So here is Pink Flare from the Moonscapes collection. And this one is Fire Hunt. So honestly, neither of these is a complete dupe. Uh, not even just like color wise. Like I would say that Fire Hunt is gonna be closer than Pink Flare because Pink Flare really is that like pink with a little bit of silver to it. Whereas Fire Hunt is, it's like a taupey, it's like if you mixed champagne and rose gold together. So this is to me, like to me, this is a true rose gold where it's a little bit warmer. It's like a mix between rose and copper. If that makes any sense, I'm I'm just a freak like that. I'm really picky about rose gold. These are both pretty, but they're not the same color. They're also much, much more textured. These definitely have a little bit of a flaky feel to them. You can, you know, get them to be a little bit more molten by mixing them with a mixing medium, dampening your brush, all of that. But the texture of uh, palladium is much more smooth. So moving down here, you can see that Midnight Sun is way deeper. Like this is a black with a red shift, whereas I feel like Space Drifter is almost like a burnt red, like a like a burnt pinky magenta. I don't even know how to explain that. <laughs> with a brownie black shift. So this is black with that red shift, whereas this one is like a lighter, less saturated red with a brown black shift. Okay, let's go ahead and dip in. So if you watched the whole swatch party, you will know, you will know that I was going to have to go through with this Quasar shade. I was so excited for this one. So we're gonna be using this one and probably a couple others. I, I don't wanna get too like taste the rainbowy. I am gonna be going to a little bit of a casual goodbye dinner with some family tonight. Not me, goodbye. My wonderful nephew is gonna be taking an amazing move. And so we're gonna go say goodbye and I, I don't wanna be like too beauty YouTuber-esque. So at any rate, I just want like a slightly more low-key look. So I'm hoping to not like end up with like a smoky eye that comes out to my temples. We'll see, you just never know during a swatch party here. Sometimes I just get excited and need all the shadow on my face. Why don't we get into this and see what happens? All right, so I'm taking a little bit of that Quasar on a Refer 28. I have a little bit of the Tarte uh, Ultra Creamy Tape Shape, Shape Tape. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the, the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape on, and I didn't set it because I wanted it to have like a little bit of moisture to it. I'm not using a glitter primer. Um, I don't need this to last for hours and hours. It's like after two o'clock at this point. So this one doesn't need to have crazy longevity, but I wanna bring this in 
think I'm gonna do this on like two thirds of the lid. I know that I said that this made me feel like I didn't need to get that um, Shine by SD uh, collab palette. I'm definitely glad that I picked this one up. I think it was honestly the wise choice just because, you know, we can we can see a palette and think like, oh my God, one or two of those shades, I just die over. And these were six pans. You could get them separate or together. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure that I will already have like popped up a picture, but uh, I just feel like, you know, sometimes we just get so excited about one or two shades. And I think the two palettes together were like, I don't know, 128 US dollars. I can't even remember anymore. And I was like, you don't need to do that right now. I mean, there were a couple shades in each of the palettes that I was like, hmm, I don't really need that. So hopefully they'll either be on sale or eventually you can get the singles of those shades and maybe then I'll pick them up. Anyway, I'm starting to yammer on. So now what we're gonna do is go into Galactic Blossom. So I'm gonna put this on the inner part of my lid. And again, just use a wet brush for this. I thought that these would be a really good combination together because this one has that like pink to green to peach. So I think like layering them up together too is gonna be a lot of fun. I do have to say though, this shade is doing that thing that I, I keep talking about it, <laughs> but it's like, if you use something that has a little bit of like a lighter base or even sometimes like more of like a, a golden shimmer, it starts to get that like kind of concealery, milky look. If it's like damp, I think if I were to use this one again in the future, I would either really try to just use a glitter primer and not wet my brush much just because I don't, I don't want it to have that like concealery feel. Can you guys even see what I'm talking about? It just gets like a little milky. I don't love that. Okay, I am very carefully and very delicately, now that this side has dried, I'm going to just tap a little bit of this shade over the top to try to like, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not quite sure what my goal is there, but. I would say trying to cover up the milkiness, but I don't I don't think that's possible. This shift though is very pretty. All right, I'm gonna just try to go in with a pencil brush and just buff that out a little bit to soften that. Now I do have to say, uh, even like just now trying to use that shade dry, uh, I didn't get any fallout. Now granted, I'm very gently tapping, but there is just something to Terra Moons. I mean, you can get some really beautiful shifty shades and there just isn't quite as much fallout because they are really creamy. I'm just gonna take my finger with a little bit of this, like right where those two colors meet. All right, now I'm trying to decide which of the more like iridescent shades that I shared I should use. I think I'm gonna go in with Meteorite. I might regret that. I might regret that and end up putting uh, Phoenix over the top, but I think I'm gonna go in with Meteorite. So this I'm just going to tap and press in on a dry brush. I probably should have gone through and done my mats first because I have a feeling when I do a mat, I'm gonna end up buffing some of this away, but oh well. I think what I'm going to do, surprisingly, I was gonna pull out my blends palette from Blend Bunny, but I think I'm actually gonna pull out Surge. I'll probably just use like this dusty green. We have a little bit of like a peach and a pink that I could mix together. So I'm just gonna use those shades to just give a little bit of shape, a little bit more of like a wash. I'm gonna start out with like a bigger fluffy brush. This is the Wayne Goss 17. All right, and then with a Blend Bunny B2, I think I'm gonna start out with Cheeks. That's the pink shade from that top row in the Surge palette. It's definitely like a pinkier pink. I'm gonna lay this down first. Actually, I'm just gonna like mix cut out and Cheeks together. So we've got like the peach and the pink and I'm gonna just take both of those. It's not exactly the same, but it's definitely made me realize that I need to go back through and do some comparison swatches of the shades that I purchased from Touch of Glam. I'm going to go ahead and take Axis and pop that on my lower lash line for a little bit of a shimmer shimmer. This one I am doing on a wet brush though because I feel like I'm gonna get a decent bit of fallout if I don't. Hmm. Okay, I really like the shade. Like I like the peachiness of it. Ew, this might be major regrets, but I'm gonna take that Blend Bunny B2 and I'm just going to, on a dry brush, ugh, pray for me. So I'm just gonna take this and pop this like just above the crease 
over where I put that like pink and peach. I like that. Uh, I definitely am going to have to do something on my lower lash line though, like maybe like a deep green because the peach on my lower lash line is giving me like mm, very tired, very irritated eye vibes. I'm fine, but like, I just feel like that color, <laughs> I just need some separation between that color and my eyeball. So. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go rectify that like under eye situation with a liner, uh, go ahead and throw on some mascara. I'm also going to swatch those other Touch of Glam shades. Oh, I think I might've gotten some like close to dupes. Dang it, see, this is why, this is why you are supposed to pull out your things and play with them right away so that you know what you have. You will have already gotten to see those comparisons, but uh, I'm gonna go finish this up, I'll be right back. All right, here we are with the final look. I definitely appreciate having a little bit of liner in the bottom. You probably can't even see it, but it definitely like got rid of the like whole, I'm a little irritated look. <laughs> so this is by the way, the LA Girl Shockwave Neon Liner in Gotcha. I did have to put a couple layers down. I put one down, I don't know if like my eyes were watering a little bit, but it wasn't super saturated. And then I did my mascara and then I just went through with another another layer, but it's looking pretty good. And then in the upper waterline, I used the 24 seven glide on pencil uh, in zero. So nice little black liner moment. And then I'm having a very Jamie Genevieve like mm, liner moment. <laughs> And this I used Bitch Perfect from Charlotte Tilbury. I have not used this lipstick in a very long time and I just found it when I was digging around over here. I have to say, I think my lips are a little dry to be using this one right now, not because this is drying, but mm, it just like, it emphasizes the lines just a little bit in my lips, but I don't even care. I don't even care. I just thought it would look pretty. And then I did go back through and use the sepia or sepia liner from Wayne Goss. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good combination. I really like it. I don't know, this is a little bit of like a 90s supermodel contour. Very, like I said, very Jamie Genevieve. I'm really liking this one. So, all right, so I'm here to do the outro, obviously. Uh, and when I went to change my camera settings, I realized that I did not have the right autofocus on. So I'm hoping that you could actually see what the hell I was doing in the little eye demo. But like I said, you were all probably here for the swatches anyway, but I'm very happy with this. Obviously I was only able to use, oh, I actually used four of the shades. That's not bad. That's not bad. Keeping it a little bit of a softer look. I really like this. Like I said, Terra Moon's formulas, they're definitely in my top two indie single eyeshadows. Yeah. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a like on your way out. It really does just help YouTube know that they should be showing my video to more people. And I would really appreciate that. And again, if you're not already subscribed, don't forget to do so, so you can catch future swatch parties. Thank you so much. It really does mean so much to me that you take some time out of your day to spend it with me. I will see you really soon.